Hi, I'm Greg Gutfeld, along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Juan Williams, Mr. Eric Bowling, and Megan McCain, The Five. Last night, Matt Lauer grilled Hillary and Donald like dates stuffed with blue cheese wrapped in bacon. There, Hillary's email trail stuck to her like toilet paper on a shoe. As a naval flight officer, I held a top secret sensitive compartmentalized information uh, clearance, and that provided me access to materials and information highly sensitive to our warfighting capabilities. Had I communicated this information not following prescribed protocols, I would have been prosecuted and imprisoned. Mmm, someone get a bag of ice because that stung. Then there was this. We are not putting ground troops into Iraq ever again, and we're not putting ground troops into Syria. We're going to defeat ISIS without committing American ground troops. Ugh. Once again, she happily tells ISIS all the stuff we won't do to stop ISIS. Hey, Hillary, why not tell them your Netflix passwords while you're at it? Oh, wait, that's too important. Speaking of. I have been very clear about the necessity for doing whatever is required to move the VA into the 21st century. We're living in a technological world. You cannot tell me we can't do a better job getting that information. So Hillary lectures us on technology. This from a woman whose Blackberry were smashed with hammers to get rid of sensitive emails. That's like breaking a thermometer to stop a heat wave. <laughs> Finally, she said no one died in Libya, which is debatable. Not a great night for Captain Pantsuit. But Trump didn't leave unscathed either, contradicting previous statements he made on Iraq and Libya. And then there's this on Putin. Well, he does have an 82% approval rating, according to the different pollsters. Yes, the one still alive. Yes, 82% <laughs> approval is amazing in that it's so low. When Putin's critics have shorter lifespans than your average mayfly, the fact that 18% are still critical of him is pretty astonishing. But Trump has a thing for strong men. He digs power based on fear, be it in Russia, North Korea, or China. He admires an iron hand, but still craves a compliment. If he says great things about me, I'm going to say great things about him. I've already said he is really very much of a leader. <laughs> so tyrants, take note. With President Trump, you'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So do these national security issues really concern anyone? The reality of an unstable world and the methods one needs to live in it seem lost among generations cocooned in bonus rooms attached to Xboxes and iPhones. Foreign policy seems truly foreign to a country that needs it now more than ever. All right, KG. Hi. Did Matt Lauer give Hillary a taste of the future? Because they, they were pretty relentless on the emails. There were like five follow-up questions. By the way, finally. Yeah. Good for Matt Lauer. I don't know why everyone is so critical, because they thought that he was just going to attack and bash Trump and give Hillary a pass, somebody who's been, like, in hiding in the witness protection program or something for 275-plus days and won't answer a question. Look, I'm proud of him. I think he did a very good job. He asked her tough questions. In fact, questions that should have been asked and followed up on by the FBI in their investigation where they came to a rosy conclusion. So, to me, this was actually very helpful helpful and I think obviously it was a big moment there right out of the bat when we had the naval officer who really put it to Hillary and said yeah. listen I would be prosecuted and imprisoned if I did what you did again different strokes for the Clintons look what happens they get a pass they get to collect all the paychecks and get all the glory and get the cash while the rest of the people are su suffering or dying in Benghazi and she still has to say thank you for your service through gritted teeth you know the guy <laughs> says you'd be I'd be in jail just <laughs> thank you for your service uh, Eric how do you think uh, how do you think they did who won all right, so I agree that Matt Lauer was great. He was great on both. He wasn't just hard on Hillary, and exactly. he was. He was hard on Trump, too. He cut Trump off. He pushed back. Now, there's today, apparently NBC is pushing back on Matt, saying he should have fact-checked uh, Trump some of the things that he had said in the past about whether he was for or against the Iraq war, and Trump clarified that later on today. I think Matt Lauer did a fine job. I also think... The questions were outstanding yeah, I from, so. the, from the people. Yeah, Every they were. single, on both sides, every single question came as a pushback on some of the things that each candidate had said in the past. Right. It was fantastic. It was, it was really a, a great 
hour. I could have I could have watched that for yeah. three hours in that format. Interesting um, for all those who think that polls matter. Uh, NBC poll was <laughs> NBC you'll never poll. let this go. NBC <laughs> poll sixty eight thousand when I left have <laughs> responded sixty two percent had Trump winning thirty eight percent had Clinton winning. But I will tell you for the thirty minutes that Clinton was asked questions. She was asked about the email scandal. She was asked about the Libya and Iraq failures. And she was asked about the Iran deal. Mm -hmm. what, and, and she was very, very thorough. She has a lot of experience in all three of those <laughs> buckets. Yeah. And the problem is, as I've been f fighting with my good friend here, Juan, for a long time, experience doesn't equal qualifications. She is far more experienced. But if you go through the things that they went through last night, you realize that that's probably not someone you want running the most powerful military and the, and the most powerful country in the world. Juan, why does she keep telling our enemies what we're not doing? I mean, it, like, at one hand, I don't like the fact that Trump is complimenting Putin, but what's worse? I mean, that's kind of, that's just as, like, at least Trump is saying scary stuff. She's saying stuff that isn't scary to our enemies. No, but she's saying stuff that's true. The American people don't want additional troops on the ground. Remember when she but, became Secretary of State, there were 200,000. Uh, American troops on the ground in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so she's saying we're not going to go back down that road, which is what the American people want. They don't want us putting more troops. But that's Your point until is, another terrorist attack happens. Well, we don't know. I mean, like, let's not, I'm, I'm not hoping for that. I nobody think that wants a war, right. but some, that's not why you have, you have a war because you have to have one, not because you want one. Right. But I think that there's a, a important point to make if you're running for president, which is that you tell the American people how you would handle a crisis. She's saying, here's what I would do in terms of air power, in terms of dealing with the enemy. Donald Trump never says a word. He just says, I've got a secret plan. He impugns the president, he says that he in his intelligence plan. briefings, he's heard stuff that body but, language. It's very wild to me. There's a misnomer that Hillary Clinton is as hawkish as, as I am, basically. And she was saying, we're never going to do anything in Iraq. We're not going to do anything in Syria. Enemies, do whatever you want. Continue mm -hmm. the largest humanitarian crisis. Seven million people displaced refugees. Do all this. We're not going to do anything. That is the type of stuff that has been happening for the past seven and a half years under President Obama. What is fascinating to me last night is that she still cannot answer eloquently answers about her emails. She still can't explain to me why she's not a third term of Obama. After all this time and all this, quote, experience, how is she not better at this? And that's the only thing that was going through my mind last night. Well, I think it's important here to, to keep something in mind. I mean, when you're looking at last night and you see Matt Lauer unable to tell Trump, hey, you know what? You're lying here. Of about course, what, he supported yeah. the war in Iraq. But, but he clarified so, that today. I don't he, know he, about today. He, I'm saying yesterday, well, he let Trump say? just you, get away with it. Said? But I want to say something no, to you, Mr. You what did he do wrong? Not only does he go after mean, your dad. Mr. Williams. Thank you. But not only does he go after your dad, Megan, he then comes back and says, oh, what do you geniuses expect if you allow men to serve with women in the military? I think you and Kimberly should just get up from the table because the three of us might attack you and then it would be your fault. You know, it's so funny. That tweet, that happens was, getting, every day. That tweet was getting so much attention and it, it's so funny. There, I actually have conflicting opinions on women in combat in the military. So the, of all the issues at stake, I'm more concerned with the VA than anything else. And quite frankly, neither of these candidates have, have a, well, what a about, solution so what that he, I find what acceptable. Trump do when, the, when someone, a veteran, stands up and says, here are the facts on the VA. He says, no, your facts are wrong. Turns out her facts are uh, right and his facts are wrong. I'm just saying, that, but he's scolding her. But you're her. being so nitpicky. He's no, I'm not. I'm you're saying, hair. You are. You're yeah. looking for hair in the egg. It's, oh, I there, see. There is a massive problem with, with veteran suicide. Let and now you're say. worried that he said 22 okay, instead of 20, if, you know what? which was originally, 22 is the number originally let put me out. Give up. And then but let me just say, to a 20 let me speak to you as someone who was a Republican, like Stuart Stevens, who worked for Romney, right? He said, if Barack Obama in 08 had said, oh, you know, Putin is better than George W. Bush as a leader, he said Republicans would have said, Obama, get out of the race. You're a disgrace to the American people. But what happens last night? That's exactly what Trump says. Putin's a great leader. We should love Putin. He has a high population. And everybody, oh, fine. You guys are, oh, that's He's, terrific. Okay. It, like, I, I, I agree and I disagree in the sense that I, I think that he has, a, he has a fondness for autocrats. But at the same time, isn't he talking about like uh, perception of defending your country uh, uh, to, uh, against yeah. other countries. He, it, it, yeah. It's not necessarily the best comparison. No, it's more of a strength model to yeah, say yeah, that yeah. Putin will do what it takes yeah. to defend his country. But that's why 
Putin is dangerous and Russia is a major cause of concern for right. us from the intelligence community standpoint, militarily, et cetera, and from national security uh, vantage point as well. Trump has said that I would like to sit down and talk to people and work things out. Well, guess what? Some of the evidence of that was he went straight to Mexico and sat down and had a conference and a meeting directly with Peña Nieto to go over all this. Okay, that. So you see the kind of approach, because as a businessman, he's like, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call that CEO and we're going to talk about this directly instead of getting mired in a lot of weighed down, you know, uh, bureaucracy and red tape and having 25 assistants or deputies talk to somebody instead of going directly to the root of the problem. That aside, obviously I have concerns, right, about national security in terms of Russia and China and North Korea and obviously the problems we have in the Middle East. But what I do see is that right from the beginning that Trump had an uh, interest in, and was very persuasive in terms of a, um, talking about the veterans and needing to make a changes there. You've seen him come out with a lot more specifics. He's not in hiding or smashing blackberries or bleach bitting himself to death like we've seen Hillary do um, or Hillary throwing her staff, you know, uh, under the bus. She's not showing presidential leadership qualities. And I'll tell you what, she's not making America safer by her actions and conduct as it relates to Benghazi, as it relates to the email scandal, as to the number of lies and obfuscation that she has engaged in throughout the course of this investigation and lack of transparency and specifically she's making America weaker by telegraphing and telling our enemies that we won't even put troops or boots on it. You don't know what's going to happen down the road yeah. in Iraq. This is an ever-evolving process. And you listen exactly. to the intelligence community and say, listen, maybe it's ISIS today, it's somebody else tomorrow. We'll deal with the caliphate, but it's going to take years to be able to handle this. So you can't say that you won't do it. Well, Are you kidding? Tell you, if you're Secretary run, of State Guilfoyle. Go run the Red Cross well, instead. Let me, let me just say that the American people don't want this, but I think the bigger libel the one that I just can't get over is, he says, America's generals have been reduced to rubble. Is that, does that mean they're demoralized? I didn't yeah. even by, by, by being ignored? That's what, no, no, he said this is under yes. Hillary, Hillary Clinton right. and Barack Obama. Well, I, don't, I know generals who disagree with Obama, but I don't think these people are idiots or been reduced to rubble. What kind of say? Who would say such a thing? And so you ask about say, commander in chief, rendered. leadership, presidential stature. There's plenty of this people in the, in, the, in the military and high-ranking generals that do not feel that they have been optimized or listened they, to or respected by this administration, and they don't want a third term I've of Barack Obama. Generals, I mean, go back to Abe Lincoln. All right, well, let's just <laughs> I mean, they all, hey, Juan, let's just cook the books some more on the intelligence, so we'll think that ISIS is oh, JV. Oh, and opening gosh. ice cream trucks instead of like doing crucifixions. That sounds like no, a good I'm idea. No, I'm just saying don't disparage America's military. I'm surprised that if I'm the, the Democrat here in the world. and Let's suddenly make Republicans it stronger. go after that. actually saying that Trump is disparaging the military to, to a great extent than Hillary Clinton is or would as president. Um, she's yes. talking about sequester. She's talking about defense f uh, spending freezes. He's talking about re releasing the sequester, increasing defense spending, increasing the military, increasing our, our footprint. <laughs> In the world, I mean, he, what this you, is what, playing. By the way, he gets a 19 percent higher uh, approval rating than she does oh, yeah? among military members. Check this out: uh -huh. Megan's dad Stop and me. and Mitt Romney both did better with the military than Donald. Donald. Wait, 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 wait. My father was a veteran, and I would have yes. loved John McCain as president. Yeah. Oh, and what does Trump say Obama. about John McCain? Oh, oh, oh well, you know God. what? You know what I do know that he endorsed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Bob McCain, Arizona. Last word, uh, Megan. My family loves Kimberly Gilfoyle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them. All right. When we come back, Trump and Clinton trashing each other's performance from last night. Their critiques when we return. Tony.